In 1995, Donald Jackson asked St. John's, how are you going to mark the millennium? And have I got an idea for you? How would you like to commission me and a team of people to handwrite the Bible? The way it would have been done centuries ago, but using a modern translation of traditional tools. Drawing on the great tradition of illumination and, and handwritten Bible, but at the same time creating something unique for our own times that is inspired by our times and in turn can inspire our times. I was first introduced to the St. John's Bible about a year ago when I was visiting another institution. I'd been in a meeting all day and had seven hours to drive home and said I was going to stop by for just a moment. Well, I got there and I was absolutely captivated. I stayed well over an hour and I couldn't wait then to get home and introduce the St. John's Bible, not only to the seminary community, but to the wider Virginia community as well. People are touched by it, maybe is how I would say that it, it reaches some level of I don't know if the word is awe, but some, some level, it's a little deeper than just the book off the shelf. No, it isn't very long before they, I'll tell them, go ahead and turn a page, and they're turning pages, and they go, oh, look at this, or look at this, how, how did they do this? The mission of the St. John's Bible is to ignite spiritual imagination of all people, of all faiths, all around the world. It certainly did that for me when I first saw it, and I wanted to share that experience not only with our students, but people throughout Central Virginia. It's a very personal experience to see a work of art. One of my favorites is the one right at the beginning of the whole thing, the creation story in seven days, but there are the seven panels for the seven days of creation. We have a picture from the Hubble telescope of the Fertile Crescent. We have reproductions of cave drawings, Aboriginal cave drawings from Australia. So St. John's Bible, it's a Bible first today. One of my favorite stories is about a little child who was at a gallery looking at our Adam and Eve portrait and the docent came around and the child had tears in his eyes. And this little African-American child looked back at her when she asked, what's wrong? And he said, nothing's wrong. It's just the first time I've ever seen an Adam and Eve that look like me. St. John's Bible includes over 160 artworks that are really designed to make people stop and think. They are also designed to bring the Bible visually into the modern world, into our visual vernacular. And so, for example, on a page about forgiveness, there's an image of the, the Twin Towers tucked in the corner there, very quietly, but just as, as a reminder to us, can we forgive, really, the unforgivable? It took 15 years for this project to, to be completed. St. John's Bible is 1,127 pages, and you can think of it as 1,127 artworks. Each page truly was an artwork, even if it didn't have a picture or illumination on it. The, the lettering itself is, 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 is remarkable. It took, on average, between 7 to 13 hours for one scribe to write one page. And that's no artwork, that's just the lettering. And it took six calligraphers seven years to write all the words of the Bible. The one thing I've always wanted to do was the Bible. My first question to the uh, brethren at St. John's was, I said, do you want it? Do you want me to make the Word of God live on a page? And they came back and said, we want it. And that's why I'm doing it for St. John's. I've been commissioned by the University of St. John's, Collegeville, Minnesota, to create the whole Bible for the 21st century. It is the equivalent for a calligrapher of being asked to do the Sistine Chapel. The idea for the Bible has never been very far 
from me, from when I first copied illuminated manuscripts as a teenager in a local museum. The quill is actually, in a sense, a modern invention uh, which retains ink for long periods of time, is capable of a fine, sustained drawing, as well as very expressive range of marks that it can make very directly. It's very sensitive. It's made of the same thing as your fingernail. It's part of yourself. It's almost like a phonograph needle. But the music that's played comes from inside me. And I don't know what's going to come in. And that's the magical part of it. Because in reaching out for that universal, I can't tell you what that universal is. It's an experience. So I have to make myself open to that experience and put myself at the disposal of that creative process. What does the Bible mean to me in religious terms? The true answer is that my religion has been calligraphy. It's been the way that's the nearest thing I've ever come to, to touching the universal. That's the nearest I've ever got. I have got the nearest to God doing calligraphy. I'm going to be close to God every time I do it. Every time I pick up and make a mark. That's a true answer, really. delighted to welcome you to campus today to enjoy these beautiful volumes. In addition to hosting the exhibit here on our campus, we're also planning to share it with the wider community. We'll take the volumes to local churches, to schools, to after-school programs, to hospitals, so that people can be inspired not only by Donald Jackson's personal story, but by the beauty of scripture itself. We can't do that alone. With your help, these volumes can become a part of our permanent collection and continue to inspire people for generations to come.